You're listening to the Turn Autism Around podcast, episode number 104. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Barbera, and it is my pleasure to present my top 10 favorite podcast episodes of 2020. This is our last episode of this year. Last year, episode number 52, I did the my top picks from 2019. So I guess it's becoming a tradition. So I... Uh, independently picked my top 10 favorites. And then we also got some input from you all that filled out our podcast listener survey. So let's get to the top 10 of 2020. Welcome back to another episode of the Turn Autism Around podcast. This is a special episode because it is the top 10 episode um, last year, we started the podcast in January 2019. So in December of 2019, I presented the top 10. And I guess we're going to make it a tradition, making each December the last episode of the year will be the top 10. That episode last year was episode 52. This episode is 104. So anytime I do an episode, we have a link that goes right there. So if you are out driving or walking and you want to look into these episodes further, you can always go to marybarbera.com forward slash the episode number, in this case, 104. And you can get all the show notes, all the links that I discuss. This year is kind of special because in addition to being the top 10 of my favorites, we also did our first podcast listener survey back in November. And I got a lot of really great data. Up until then, I was really kind of flying blind and assuming that half of you were professionals and half of you were parents and not knowing what percentage had really young children or older teens and adults. So um, even though uh, we we have many people listening and over 350,000 downloads in two years, less than two years, um, I got 160 responses, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, it really gave me um, some good feedback on um, if people liked interviews versus solo shows or a mixture of both. Actually, the vast majority of people, 94%, I believe, uh, said they liked the mixture of both. So we're going to continue on with that. Um I've been saying there's half and half, half parents, half professionals, but our survey results showed that actually there's more parents and caregivers here, 70% versus 21% professionals and 9% both parents and professionals like myself, where I'm a parent and a behavior analyst. The ages of your children or clients um, actually... 64% were under the age of five. Uh, the biggest part of our audience are have children or clients three to five years of age, which is great because a lot of my emphasis over the past year and going forward into 2021 will certainly be those little kids under the age of five. So we have 64% of you with that age range, six to 12 year olds, uh, 29%. And then teens, we have 5% and adults, we have 2%. So that was great information. Um, my first book, uh, as you may or may not know, The Verbal Behavior Approach, How to Teach Children with Autism and Developmental Disorders was published way back in 2007, so many years ago. And that book, um, and really, all of my online courses and my new book is all based on children, teens, and adults with a developmental language ability of a five-year-old or younger. So that one to five-year-old, whether you're chronologically that age or developmentally and language-wise that age, that's really um, who I help the most. Sure, if you have um, children who are conversational, um, these techniques work for typically developing kids and adults as well. Okay, so that is episode number one uh, of our top 10 list. So the second one that I consider a top 10 favorite, which was also um, on the survey, picked out a few times, is number 70. Kate 
Swenson from Finding Cooper's Voice. It's an interview. Kate has uh, grown a Finding Cooper's Voice Facebook page, which is a blog and a, and a Facebook page with over half a million um, likes and participants. She also has a private group, um, which she charges a nominal fee per month, which I've been a part of since she started it. And it really helps, especially parents of kids with severe autism. Kate has a son, Cooper, who is about 10 years of age and he has severe nonverbal autism. I've also, as I said, been a part of Kate's group and also have done some live uh, Facebook live interviews specifically on uh, the potty training topics. And she, this is a, a common question Kate gets from many members. So the other great thing about Kate's episode, which is number 70. So when I say number 70, it's marybarbera.com forward slash 70 is at the very end. You know, if you've listened to a bunch um, of my interviews, you know, I always end, almost always end with part of my podcast goals are for parents and professionals to be less stressed and lead happier lives. Do you have any stress reduction tools or self-care skill management tools? And Kate said, um, that Cooper doesn't wear headphones. And so his iPad was always so loud in the background and causing major chaos in her family until she found a noise uh, volume reducer app on, on that she could put on his iPad to basically make it not go up past half of a volume, you know, not go to volume 10, but only go to volume five. And I had never heard about that. Now Lucas l listens with headphones, but he still up until that point was often playing it very loud. And we were constantly telling him to turn it down. And I immediately, as soon as I got off that interview, downloaded the app and it has really prevented Lucas from getting overstimulated from loud noises coming through his headphones. So that was really a great tip for me. And that is at episode number 70 with Kate Swenson. Moving on to my third pick is episode number 78 with Michelle C. And Michelle C. actually ended up making it, uh, her story ended up making it to chapter eight of my new book. Um, it, she, uh, I really didn't know anything about her. She joined the toddler, my toddler online course during COVID in March March 25th to be exact. Michelle was a high school teacher by training. She was home on maternity leave. She had her daughter, Elena, who had just turned two, had just got diagnosed with autism and she had a newborn baby as well. She was locked down during COVID. All services had stopped and she was not able to get Elena into ABA like she had wanted to. And she found my course and she started taking it and she did all the homework assignments, everything to the T and she made remarkable progress. And I didn't know anything about her until the end of the course, she posted that her daughter went from two words to over 500 words. Um, and, um, I wanted to get her on the phone. So I got her on a zoom call and we weren't even really planning on doing a podcast, but right before I hit record, I asked her, I said, can we just pretend this is a podcast just in case? Um, this turns out to be podcast worthy and boy, did it become podcast worthy. Um, episode number 78, Michelle details how she missed the first signs, was in denial. Her husband, who's a police officer was less in denial than she as a teacher and they got the diagnosis. They were all ready to start or get going with ABA and the world shut down. Uh, her daughter made miraculous progress in only 33 days of the course, going from two words in one hour time sample to 180 words and phrases. Um, in the podcast, she also talks about how she had standardized speech evaluation right before and right after the course. And so uh, she was very uh, generous in allowing me access to those reports. And my BCBA mentor, Dr. Rick Cabina and I have now written up uh, Michelle C's daughter's case study and are hoping to get that published in a peer reviewed journal 
in 2021. So Michelle C had that episode 78 is just uh, a great success story. The survey respondents who completed the podcast survey said they loved they love that episode. They've loved Kelsey's episode in episode number three. I also featured Mandy V this year. I featured um, several podcasts uh, where we feature success stories. And um, that seems to be something that listeners enjoy hearing. But episode number 78 is a great one to listen to, especially if you, you yourself or you know a family that really needs some hope that they can turn things around with a very young child. Okay, my fourth pick uh, this year is episode number 80 with Denise Voigt, who is a functional medicine nutritionist. And those of you that have listened for a long time know that I'm a registered nurse and a board certified behavior analyst, as well as a mom. And I know many of our kids have medical issues that co-occur with their autism, and they also have severe nutritional issues in many cases. So Denise is a functional medicine nutritionist. She helps mostly kids with autism and ADHD. She fell into the whole world of nutritional um, counseling and nutritional. She has a master's degree in that specialty when her son started showing signs of ADHD and, and he really responded to nutritional help. She also helps adults and is just a wealth of information. I really found that episode 80 was a great one. Moving on to next on our list of top 10 is the number one fan favorite um, by far. It was mentioned multiple times and that is episode number 85 with my typically developing son Spencer and this episode was all about siblings. Um, I say in that episode that one of the few blessings of COVID this year of the COVID shutdown was having Spencer come home from New Orleans and live with us from for several months from March through July. And I interviewed him in person in my video studio in my home right before he returned to New Orleans to start medical school. We discussed with Spencer, I discussed with Spencer the role of siblings and the feelings, the unique relationships he has with Lucas. And we also talked about embarrassing moments, his sibling feelings of responsibility, what the future might hold. Um, it's a very good episode. So that is episode number 85. Number six on our list of top 10 is number 88 with Carrie Magro, who is an adult with autism. He has a doctorate in education. And he is a keynote speaker. He's a great guy. He's an author. I featured several um, adult autistic um, individuals this year. Carrie Magro, uh, Eileen, um, L, Ke Kelly Carpenter, Rachel Barcelona. Great episodes to give us their insight um, on what it was like growing up with autism. And they are all fully conversational and and. Um, Rachel is, a in college still, she's a beauty queen, Kelly Carpenter and her mom, Susie were on the show. She is a young adult. She's driving and, uh, we talk about bullying and those sorts of things, but Carrie Magro, I think is, is just a wealth of information and real leader in the field. He is episode number 88. Next on our list at number seven of our top 10 is episode number 90 with Tamara Casper. And we, she is both a speech and language pathologist for many years, as well as a BCBA for several years. Um, we talk about speech and specifically about apraxia and autism. And our survey results, many people said that any episode that involves speech or speech strategies they loved. And uh, Tamara Casper's episode number 90 was mentioned a few times as well. In the episode, Tammy and I share our funny and very similar stories of the first time we each saw Dr. Carbone present. And um, really, Tammy gives us her, her expertise on apraxia. And 
basically says that it's the same treatment for very young children with apraxia uh, and autism versus just autism. We need to treat kids with minimal vocalizations the same, combining MANS, tax, echoics, using multiple control, teaching sign, addressing. Um, in this episode 90, we also talk about addressing pacifier addiction, which is up until I saw Tammy's presentation at the National Autism Conference, I didn't really hear anybody else talking about pacifiers. And I think it's a big deal. And I have um, six steps to weaning from pacifiers um, available as a cheat sheet. I also have that um, in my book coming up because I do think that very young children um, who are addicted to pacifiers or bottles are still on that well past the age of one. Um, it can really affect their talking as well. Uh, the next episode to make our top 10 is the only solo show that I picked this year. It's episode number 93, where I discuss um, Dr. Ami Klin's research. I watch, I was live in person at the National Autism Conference at Penn State in 2019 when I heard Dr. Klin present at the Q&A session during his presentation. I raised my hand and I asked if he thought if autism could be pre prevented. He said no, he didn't think that autism could be prevented, but he was pretty sure based on his research of eye gazes and uh, twin studies as well as early intervention studies that um, prevention of intellectual disability, prevention of speech disorders and behavioral disorders could be prevented um, if we started and detected uh, autism or signs of autism early and we started treating it intensively. In uh, a 2020 paper that he wrote with colleagues, um, it's more of a uh, white paper. It's more of an opinion piece how we have to really start treating autism, signs of autism as early as possible. And we have to train parents how to get things back on track if possible or be aware when eye gaze and babbling and imitations start to get off track. Um, I think I, I, I saw Dr. Clinton, as I said, present live in 2019. And then I saw his two different workshops um, in 2020. And I, in episode nine, number 93, I summarize both the 2019 as well as the two 2020 talks as well as his, his 2020 paper. Um, I summarize this and I talk about some of the real key takeaways I had um, in that episode. One of the stats in his paper uh, is that intellectual disability occurs with autism in black children almost twice as much as in white children. And I talk about this also in episode number 99 with Maria who founded Autism in Black. So um, lots of great uh, research summarization in episode number 93. As I said, it's my only solo show that I picked this year for the top 10. The next episode on our top 10 list is number 95 with Dr. Keith Williams, who is a PhD and BCBAD. This was our number two fan favorite from our survey. Dr. Williams is an international feeding expert. He's a behavior analyst. I saw the National Autism Conference lecture from Tamara Casper, from Dr. Ami Klin, from Dr. Vincent Carbone, and from Keith Williams. And in two of, the, two of the cases, I got interviews, two of the situations with Ami Klin and Dr. Carbone, I did solo shows to summarize it. Um, but Dr. Williams was nice enough to agree to come on the show in his National Autism Conference lecture. He talked about how he's seeing nu severe nutritional deficiencies like rickets and scurvy in, in children with autism. And he's seeing it more and more as the years go by. He also, so I had him on the show and it was a, it's a really great episode. Um, it's number 95. And in that episode, he talked about a paper from Susan Mays and a colleague. Susan Mays is at Hershey as well. And um, 
she her research is showing that picky eating is now a diagnostic indicator for autism and you can add that to the list so if you have a very young child and you're trying to determine if it's autism or adhd or speech delays if they have picky eating that's more of a sign that it's going to be autism um, it's so common among children with autism in episode number 95 i also learned about a, a book by keith williams and a colleague called broccoli boot camp and um, i was able to pull that reference into my new book i was also able to include some of the information i learned within that podcast right into my new book at the last draft um, dr williams also reviewed my new book and wrote a wonderful endorsement as did Dr. Sunberg and Dr. Gabina and many of the guests, Dr. Bridget Taylor, Dr. Amanda Kelly, um, Michelle C. So, so the podcast has really enabled me to get new information, to get it out there either in a podcast and or in my new book and as well as um, to run my new draft book by these experts um, for endorsements. So last but not least of our final top 10 for 2020 is, an, is episode number 100, which is such a milestone for me. It was just a few weeks ago. It's the Turn Autism Around panel, including Michelle C. from episode 78, Dr. Allie Patterson, who's a BCBAD, who also joined my toddler course during COVID and did her own episode. Um, and then we had two more people on the panel peter who's a dad of an 11 year old from australia and julie t who's a bcba and a mom of a 24 year old with autism who graduated from college so it's a great discussion about what turning autism around really means and there's been discussion what do, I, what do you mean turning autism around some people don't like that title but it, guess what? It's the title of my podcast. It's the title of my new book. And what turning autism around means is really just getting each child or adult with or without autism to be as safe as possible, as independent as possible, as happy as possible, reach their full potential for all of you parents and professionals to be less stressed and lead happier lives. It's, it's an optimistic approach that whatever the struggles, whether it's severe autism, um, not potty trained, picky eating, we can turn things around. We can start to make improvements. We can break things down and really um, look at the whole picture and see what's most important to work on first and to move forward and for really little kids like Michelle C's daughter or other um, people that I've interacted with, it might mean, um, you know, really becoming more and more indistinguishable. It might, be, it might mean being able to go to regular preschool without support or kindergarten eventually without support. But if I really don't want to get caught up on where you're going to end up for each child or client turning autism around means something different and it's a very positive child friendly look at the whole picture and really go for those safety independence and happiness which are my goals for both of my sons for all of my clients for all of your children and clients as well so those are my top 10. I hope you enjoyed it. They're all going to be listed in the show notes at marybarbera.com forward slash 104. And maybe you have feedback. Maybe I didn't pick one of your top 10s. Um, if you have input for me, it's not too late to fill out the podcast survey at marybarbera.com forward slash podcast survey. You can always email me at info at marybarbera.com. We have a big year coming in 2021. The book will be out on March 30th, 2021. We're going to be doing a pre-launch soon. We're going to be building a uh, launch team to help me get the word out. This book is going to really help a lot of people. Dr. Temple Grandin did the forward for the book. I've gotten many, many endorsements from podcast guests and from parents and professionals of all walks of life. So... I'm super excited to 
be done with 2020 and to move on to 2021. And I hope you enjoyed this episode listing out the top 10. I wish you a very happy new year and I will see you in January.